You're listening to Barbell Logic, the podcast where we talk about what it means to experience strength and how you can use simple, hard, and effective strategies in training and nutrition to improve your life. It starts with meeting you where you are right now and finding lasting solutions. Welcome to the show. So Kinsley's playing softball and uh, where she plays softball is in a town northeast of town. And we live on the far southwest edge. So it's a long way to get to the softball field. And at that age, she's 11. At that age, they their softball games are like exactly an hour long because there's a game every hour. And so if they start late, like if the game's at 7 and it it starts at 7.15, they're only playing until 8. That's it. Well, this year is the first year for the where the girls are pitching to each other instead of having a coach pitch. And there's sort of a transition in this process where if if the pitcher pitches three balls, they bring the coach out and let the coach pitch one to two, depending on what the count is. So okay. it's like three and two or whatever. They get to three balls, they'll let the they'll let the the batter's team's coach pitch to them one or two pitches. Okay. The problem is, is that these little girls are not good pitchers. And it's to be expected. They're 11 years old and they're yeah. this is their first year doing this thing. But the problem is, is that they throw a lot of balls and there's a lot of foul balls. And so every batter gets about 10 to 12 pitches, seven or eight of which goes by the catcher. So it goes by the catcher. The catcher stands up, walks back uh, to the backstop, picks up the ball. So every at bat is like five minutes, six so minutes like long. The only person tired at the end of the game is the catcher. <laughs> and the parents from <laughs> watching the, the thing. <laughs> like the parents don't care who win or lose. We just want action. Like, yeah. come on, man, just put the mm-hmm. ball in play. And so Kinsley only got to bat one time the last game. Literally oh, once. So we drove 45 minutes out, 45 minutes back, won it bad. And that's <laughs> so, like really what you want to get to do yeah, when you play. She, now, I will say she plays first base and she's a pretty good first baseman. Oh, so that's cool. Any any ball in play is getting thrown at her. Like the, they've taught these girls at this age, like even if you're sure the batter is going to beat, the runner is going to beat the throw, still throw it to first. So she has a lot of opportunity to catch a lot of like crazy that's throws. Cool. But they're they're rough. So <laughs> these are. I really enjoy watching my kid play, but it's a long... <laughs> And it's, yeah, the game's at seven. It's done at eight. It's 8.45 or nine by the time we get, we always take her then to, and it's it's been super hot. So we'll go by the gas station and get her like a Powerade or something on the way yeah. home. Oof. It's a long, it makes for a long night on Thursdays. <laughs> All right, let's roll it. Let's do this. Uh, okay. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Matt Reynolds. I'm here with Nikki Sims. Did a little Joe Rogan rolling start here this morning. <laughs> so we'll see if uh, Steven leaves that in or cuts it out. This morning, we're going to talk about tactile cues, tactile, tactile. How do you say it? Tactile. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I like to see when we're doing this in like a seminar or something, how many people say tactical and don't realize it. That's like, you know, one of my (laughs) biggest pet peeves is nuclear. Oh, but once I I hear that word, I can't stop saying it. Like if someone says it, I forget how to say it. It's nuclear. It's It's nuclear. W screwed this up years ago. (laughs) Oh my God. Nuclear. It's not nuclear. nuclear. Crap. Now, see, now it's <laughs> nuclear. in my head. Nuclear. Oh, Thank you. Oh, it drives me insane. <laughs> it's anyway, tactical so, cues. Tactical cues. So last, <laughs> last time that we were on the podcast together, a couple weeks ago, we talked about verbal cues, which is the, probably, the, it's certainly the one that you're going to use the most, verbal cues, probably 80% of the time. Tactical cues uh, are probably number two, although I would argue they're probably number two in in-person coaching. And online coaching, we're going to use more a little more visual cues, and we're probably going to use tactile cues last. So we're going to talk a little bit about how we utilize tactile cues, both with in-person coaching and online coaching. Did I say tactile? It really sounds like you're saying tactical. <laughs> <laughs> I said tactile. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. Pterodactyl. Okay. okay. So um, how? let's just start. How do you approach tactile, hard eye, cues? <laughs> uh, let's start with in-person coaching. How do you how do you think about them first and, and then like how do you apply them to your own coaching to kind of supplement your verbal? So tactile cues are really helpful in the earlier stages of the work set when things are really light or when you're going through just like the unloaded progression because there's not a lifter distracted by the weight. You're not forcing anybody to stand under 315 pounds while you're moving their elbows around for yeah. three minutes and while you're talking. Like you can teach them by putting them into a specific position and call their attention to the part of your to the, to the part of their body that you need to change 
Yep. So it helps them a lot by um, instead of having to verbally process something or I guess uh, process something that they've just heard from you, they just get to feel it. Yep. I like that. It really focuses them when you touch somebody somewhere immediately makes them focus on the thing. Right. And we yeah. should probably bring up at this point, CJ wrote a really good article a couple years ago about how the the queuing has changed in the modern world. You got to be really careful about making sure people are okay with you getting in their personal space. And, and, and it also depends on who you're coaching, you know, for I've, I've almost semi joked and it doesn't feel like a joke anymore for years when I was a, a high school strength coach and would even have junior high and high school girls. I never touched them ever. I'm just like, nope, 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 nope. Twice. And so, yeah. yeah, it's just, and it's, and, and you're not, you know, it's elbows and it's, you know, it's elbows and it's knees and I'm like, nah, let's just, you know, so I would, uh, you got to be really careful with that. You got to make sure that the person that you're coaching, you've got trust and you've developed that trust relationship and you're like, they understand that we're, I'm trying to put you in the right position. But in every one of those teaching progressions of the four main lifts, we typically have ways that we use tactical cues, right? Tactile. I did say it did come out really fast. Like tactical, it. damn it. <laughs> tactile. Now I'm going to do this very carefully for the rest of the show. <laughs> tactile cues that we use in the teaching progression. So, you know, in the squat, a lot of times we'll take somebody, we'll actually like touch their back and we'll say, this is what your back should be like. This is what it should feel like. This is what extension is. This is maybe it's more horizontal than you think it should be. We might show that their knees are out over their toes going out instead of forward. We might push down on their hips and make them drive up our hands to show kind of that, that hip drive. So those are things that we'll use on the squat. We'll do the same on the, on the press, you know, we'll grab their elbows and pull it forward. For those yeah. of you guys watching the video, I'm kind of Right. So it's that close grip, elbows forward, wrist straight. And we often yeah. have to put them in that elbows forward, wrist straight. And I'll tell wrist. you what, on the press, that's what you're going to cue everybody on for like the first three months of that's right. working with someone. So that's just right. use your hands, put their elbows where they need to be. That's exactly right. Go right yeah. <laughs> yeah. They, they want to take it out in a in a clean rack position, mm -hmm. except they're, they want their elbows to be down and but their wrist to be super bent and the bar to be back in their fingers and the bar like resting on their shoulders. And I'm like, that's not that's not what we taught at all. Who taught you this? Yeah. You use one for the leg drive and the bench press. What do you do there? Oh, yeah. I picked this up from another coach where they get into position on the bench and then you put your fists as the coach in their traps, really. And then you have them press their feet into the floor and try to scoot up the bench into my fists. Yeah. And so I'm blocking their ability to move up the bench, but it allows them to feel what leg drive actually feels like. What it should feel like. Yeah, what it for should feel like. For most people, what they do when they first try to leg drive is they throw their hips up in the air yeah. and their butt comes off the bench. Like, no, you're not driving your hips off the bench. You're driving your body down the bench horizontally, not hips vertical, which yeah. well, I like that. I like that fist cue. And then the back, kind of the same thing on the deadlift. We, we'll set them on the deadlift. We'll make sure we got the tactile cues. We'll make sure they set their back. We might sque help them squeeze their chest up by grabbing their shoulders and kind of pushing their back into their belly, kind of down between their legs. Um, and we'll probably use tactile cues, tactile. Damn it. It's going to kill me. Hey, you guys could do a drinking game for this. I know. So every time I say it and it Get sounds like tactical, out. just yeah, that's right. So yeah, yeah, don't go hard liquor. It might be a bad, uh, might be a bad twenty five minutes here. So we we do use those in online or in in person coaching for the teaching method. What about during the actual coaching itself? How once we've gotten past that piece, we're trying to go from okay, we've taught you the lift, and now we're trying to cue the lift. How might we use tactile cues? <laughs> to make sure that they're doing what we want them to do? Um, that's going to be... I think it works well when you've, like, in any queuing, you've established what it actually means already. So you're not throwing something new into the mix. But with verbal cues, you're really trying to, like, they're in point A. You have what point B needs to be in your head. They might not know what point B is. And so you have to tell them how to get there. And that's yeah. kind of what a verbal cue is. You're the bridge. You're the bridge between A yeah. and B verbally. Yeah, it's kind of their map. But um, what you can do with a tactile cue is put them in point B. And then they start to understand what that feels like, which develops a whole new level of understanding for them to be like, oh, okay, now I know what point A feels like. And I also know what point B feels like. So I have a better ability to get from point A to point B. Yeah. And a lot of times with new lifters and or even someone who's been training in some way but just comes into lifting their proprioceptive ability or their level of proprioception might be challenged in the beginning <laughs> very low that's right <laughs> and so you just like putting like manually manipulating them into that position can be really really more helpful for them and more helpful for you because i don't know if have you've ever been in a position where you're like talking to someone telling them to try 
and do something in a certain oh. way. And you're just like, oh, my Lord, please. I taught junior high boys. Please. Oh, yeah. Like, just imagine when it's like teaching 14-year-old boys and you're like, get in the athletic stance position, right? The same. It's the same position. In volleyball, shortstop, linebacker. It's all, it's all the same position, right? It's that, mm-hmm. it's that attention position that your butt's out, sticking back behind you, your chest is up, facing forward, and you're like in the ready position, right? And 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 feet and it's, and it's really kind of what the start of a squat will look like. The very yeah. first, just you break at the hips and the knees. Yeah. And you can't talk them into it. You have to walk <laughs> over and mash them into it. Like you're like yeah. this, right? <laughs> and then they're like, oh, and you kind of see the light bulb going. But I mean, they, uh-huh. you know, they're... And then they're, they start to feel what it feels like. like that's oh, right. And now like get it. back into that, right? Which, yeah. by the way, when we, it's come back into where maybe the connection is between verbal and tactile. We talked last week about how when someone does something correctly, they do a rep right. I always say yes, just like that. Yeah. And what am I speaking to? Well, I'm speaking to what it felt like to them. Yes. Whatever you felt on that rep one, and I don't have time to say all this, right? So whatever you felt on rep one, feel the same thing on rep two. Totally. Or, or whatever. And so I, that's so, and I can do all that by going, good, yes, just like that, whatever it is. And they can do the thing. So no, so you're right. It the verbal cues will will bridge them from point A to point B. But the tactile cues, you know, make your knees touch the board, instantly gets them to point B yeah. with no thought. They don't have yeah. to think through the verbal process there or, or the communication process. They just get there. You're like, oh, that's it. Yeah. Like, see what that feels like? That's the one. And especially if you have to talk about, like, some small part of their body that they're just like, what is that part of my body? That's right. Like, that's the right. lumbar that some people are just like, I can move that. <laughs> That's right. That's right. And if you touch that area, they're just like, ah, okay, I can manipulate. Or like shoulder blades together is another good one to kind of bring it to, like you said, bring their focus to certain areas that they may not understand where that actually is. And that I think goes really well if you're speaking to anything on the posterior side of the body, because we can't see it. We don't know what that is. Yeah. You think about bar position on the, on the squat. A lot of times that's one of the harder things to get right in the first week or so of online coaching, because it, it it's so easy for me to get somebody in a low bar position if I'm standing behind them. I got to get their grip set right, which I put their hands in place, right? Instead of just being like, I don't know, just do the best you can. One and then centimeter you're, in, one centimeter yeah, out. Uh, yeah, right. Yeah. And, and like like they're going to remember from session one <laughs> to session two in online, right? So it's, it's certainly yeah. this is a something you have to overcome. And then I just take the bar, if you're, again, if you're watching on YouTube, I take the bar with my fingers and I take my thumbs, I push my thumbs against their against their shoulder blades, and I just shove them up underneath the bar until, and they go, boom, it hits. Yeah, mm-hmm. so it, until it drops below the main part of the traps and get, sits up on the spine of the scapulae or across the, across of the posterior delts. It's a great way to do that. To put it, and again, because they don't know, they don't, I would wager they don't even know what it looks like back there, let alone what it feels True. like. Mm-hmm. Like, I, it's actually pretty rare that, Sometimes I go to the beach or pool or something and I, I'll see a picture of my whole back. I'm like, I never see my back. I don't even know what that looks like. <laughs> you know, and I'm it's like giant. <laughs> it's a big back. I'm like, wow, and there's a lot of hair back there. And I'm like, this is like, it's not so and then I and then I clap for my 17 year old to come out and break out the beard trimmer and let's uh let's, let's trim it down. <laughs> no, it yeah, ready. you don't know what's you can't you can't tell, you can't see what's back there. And so that's uh that that's a really good part of those cues. Another one I'll use, uh, one of my favorite ones on the press. Mm. is if somebody has a beard or someone has bangs, I want them to run the bar through that. So if Ooh, a so guy... You give them their own tactile that's cue. A, that's exactly right. Even online yeah. coaching a lot. So I Big go, time. hey, run it through your beard for guys that have beards, unless they've, I've got a couple clients that have beards that are like 18 inches long, so that doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> so, Or if somebody has bangs, obviously that doesn't work. For, the bangs thing doesn't work for me, but I know that I run it through my beard every single time when I press. When you're trying to explain how close you want the bar to their face or in their nose and whatnot. Like you don't want them to actually touch their nose. That's not a great tactile cue. Right. <laughs> and so, yeah. <laughs> but, but, but if you run it through your bangs, I had a client that just, I mean, he had relatively short bangs and uh, this short was an in-person bangs. client at strong and he would run it right through his hair. And he didn't even know he, he was doing it. He just so figured funny it out. When you talk about men as having bangs. Well, I, what, what I remember you call like it? when I grew up, it was like the bangs that I would like yeah, use sure. my round brush and right. dry them for like 30 minutes and then just put a whole bunch of hair net hairspray yeah, yeah. in them. So it was like. <laughs> which was still one step better than what we did in the 90s, which is the big, oh, giant yes. hairspray bangs. <laughs> uh, just ridiculous. But so yeah, good. There, so you can give yeah. them you can give them tactile cues. To aim for. Same, same thing on things like where they touch on a bench press on their chest. You yeah. can you can give them uh, tactile cues. You can tell cues. them to touch it. That's right. And and again, sometimes online, I will. And in person, sometimes I'll touch it. And then again, sometimes if I have a female, I'll grab her finger 
yeah. and I'll point her finger down at her chest and I'll and I'll, you know, I'll poke where I want it to touch because I'm not I'm not doing it. I'm not poking right there. Wise, and so, yeah, and so, wise. That's right. So, <laughs> Did uh, we say that tactile means touch? Do we I don't think so, that? but that's You'll probably good. I mean, I okay. would I would hope at this point <laughs> if you've listened to 500 episodes of the podcast, but you know, maybe somebody's doing it's the first. One. Yeah, tactile, right? Tactile. So it's 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 it means touch and so, in your hands. and it doesn't necessarily mean a human touching a human it just means for in the in the course of lifting and coaching i'm i'm trying often to get the lifter to touch something and often that means i have to manip- manipulate them as a coach in person but even online i do this all the time i talk about how to box squat what the box should feel like when they sit on the box i say i say ease on the box like a ninja i don't make any noise Right. Like, but I do want it to take your, a lot of your weight. Right. I'm, I, again, there are different ways to teach a box squat. I like the box to actually take some of the weight, not just to goose somebody, but there's more than one ways to skin a cat. So you can use those examples in online coaching, like how it should feel. We talked about taking the bar out with authority. Um, we did a video on this and we showed Michael Wolf doing this and what it should feel like when you take the bar out on a squat or a press, specifically those two lifts. Like those things are important the way it feels. If you come out soft and you know, and you're all, mur, mur, and then you walk out. It's like, it's hard to hit a heavy set of five. It's hard to hit right. anything. And so that's that's big. I don't know. Other other places where you use it? Um, I'm trying to go through each lift. Like on the squat, you talked about getting the grip set. I think that's a great yep. thing to do that for. Anything that involves like a unilateral adjustment, I think it's really nice to use your hands. Just put it there because... Something about like if it's bilateral, if you're trying to manipulate both sides of someone's like their stance or their hands, that seems to be something you can communicate verbally yep. much more easily. But if it's just like one hand or one foot or like one shoulder, I think using your hands to kind of push it into position yep. makes more sense because to them, it probably feels symmetrical. Sure. But you're trying to get them into a spot where it actually looks symmetrical and probably feels really weird for them. Yeah, right. So I think unilateral adjustments are really important to use. Sh- so like to shoulder, with. shoulder issue. I had a guy that I was coaching, um, one of my online clients, but I was doing a, uh, a camp with, uh, Tanner Guzzi and was one of my clients went and, and met this guy, great guy. And he's got a bump. He's got one shoulder that's like just way tighter than the other. And he just didn't notice. And I didn't notice because I was watching those squat videos from that 45 degree angle. That's why it's so important that we occasionally, I try to remember once or twice a month to have my clients shoot from the front or the back. And he was going under and he was way off center on the bar, on the squat, because one shoulder was so tight. Yeah. He was just going, he was going to equal tightness on both shoulders, but one was tighter than the other. So he would shift right. And so that's where a tactile cue is great because you can just grab him and just wiggle him back to the left and go right there. Yeah. Feel that? That's the spot, <laughs> that's right? It. And so, and then you just make them cognizant as, as they go under, they go under very symmetrical. You, they can't go under and like shift to the right. You can't go yeah. under and shift to the left. And so you might totally see the same thing. With like. like an elbow will flare or one knee will come in or one knee will go out or whatever. Those are places I think where things like a two bow work really well, like a terribly useful block of wood where you take a block of wood, a block, like a two by or a, a four by six or a four by four, or even like a, a, a heavier foam roller or something. And you set it at the end of their toe and you say, your knees touch this, but they can't knock it over. They don't go past this, but they do need to touch it. If they don't yeah. touch it, you're back too far on your heels. If they touch it and then knock it over, your knees are continuing to come forward in the bottom part of the descent on the squat. So these are all things that we can use. And we can use those um, We can use those even in, in online, obviously, because when, when the tactile cue is not coming from a coach, but coming from a thing, coming from an object, then you can often set up that object for your online clients and have them utilize that. So Sometimes it, it forces us to think outside the box because I'm not there to actually manipulate them in, in real time. And so I, I think that's also really key. Um, another one for squat that I've seen some people use is if people are having issues with hitting depth, they'll put a rubber band across yeah, that's exactly the right. safety pins. And I like that one because it's not like a box that they'll just sit on. Yes, right. <laughs> it gives you, it lets you feel something and you're still responsible for maintaining tension. Yep. Um, that's a good one. For yeah, and then squats. you can slowly pull it, right? So the idea there is like yeah. you establish this thing. So at first, again, it takes their focus. Their focus is going to be when you're using that that uh, bungee cord, that band across the the rack. Their their focus is going to be on that thing, and that's okay Which, because you're you're trying to fix the biggest thing. Yeah, yeah. Which you would never put your hand there. No, no, no. no. Yeah, that's actually a great. Yeah, it's a great point. Yeah, that's like, actually a really good it, point. It seems like we're revealing some kinds of tactile cues here. We have. A tactile cue that like moves them. Like if you're doing an unloaded squat, you might actually put your hand on their hips, 
put your hand on their back and make them lean over. So yeah. you're moving the lifter or with the elbows on a press, you're moving their elbows. So you're yep. actually contributing to movement. Then we have some that are bringing attention to certain areas like, you know, when you put your hands in the middle of their backs to help them go chest out yep. or when you touch their lower back to help them go into extension. So then you're bringing attention to a certain area. And then you have a third type, which is creating targets that they can feel yeah. like with kind the tubo and with exactly and with the pressure on the chest for the bench and then with the band on the box. So it's yep. like you have three different kinds yeah, of I like that. ways you can use that. Yeah, and then you can use that both in in person and online, and different different scenarios create different um, challenges. I certainly believe, and and I think it would be you know dishonest of us if we didn't say so that tactile cues are the hardest thing to do online. Yeah, uh, but when we do this here in another couple of weeks, and we talk about visual cues, visual cues are almost I would argue almost never used in person. Very very rare. We'll Gosh, talk about yeah. it. Yeah. Just hold it. Hold it for two weeks. So many but we things. use them <laughs> constantly online. Yeah. Because the client actually gets attention. to, that's right, they actually get to watch themselves do the thing. Yeah. They get to have sort of an out-of-body experience and watch what it looks like <laughs> while their coach talks to them, which is pretty cool. So so there, there's a trade-off here between in-person and online where I think in-person you can more effectively use tactile cues uh, but can still be used online. It just, you got to think a little bit harder about it. And and visual cues become much more difficult to use in person, but much easier to use online. And so yeah. um, I think that's understanding how all of these fit into the toolbox and the scenario, the client, what's appropriate under with a specific client in a specific time and place, in a specific geography, you know, whatever that thing is, those things become really important. As a matter of fact, and we talked about this a little bit last week, you know, the the idea of when it's okay verbally to be like really assertive and really dominant on the on the platform as a coach versus when it's time to just like calm them down. It's okay. Yeah. It's like you have to learn over time when your cues are useful and when they'll be a distraction. That's exactly and I right. think the I heavier the weight. Same. Yeah. Especially when weight gets heavy. That's exactly right. cues, I think, just become a distraction. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, because you just have a certain thing you can think about. It's really hard to think about more than one thing when the bar is moving. And so when the when when it's really light or empty bar or body weight only, those tactile cues are great because that is the primary thing you want them to think about. But you, yeah, you open the show with, we don't really, do, we don't do these at all when it gets heavy. As a matter of fact, I'm not crazy about using it. I've got some clients that they get a little bit attached to like a tubo because their knees slide forward and they want to use the tubo in all their work sets. And I'm, I'll let them yeah. do it for a couple workouts, but not very long. I agree. And I'm like, listen, use it on your warm ups. watch your warm ups. watch the videos, post a warm up video for me. So I can see one of your heavier warm-ups, but then pull it for the work sets and just yep. pretend it's there. Just pretend it's there, but it's not there. And remember what you felt when you used That's it. Exactly That's right. the whole idea. That's exactly what you're yeah. doing. That's exactly, yeah. So, yeah. so in the tactile cues, like you said, not only, not only with how much weight is on the bar, but there is a way to aggressively give a tactile cue. And there's a way to very sort of conservatively and softly give a tactile cue, right? So there's times when you want somebody to hip drive and you're like, whack, whack, whack on the top of their sacrum. And you're like, mm -hmm. drive this up, you know, <laughs> or like you said, they will not bend over on a squat. And so you just take them and fold them in half. But you do that right. with the empty bar on yeah. their back. You don't do that with 315. I wouldn't, I'm not going to touch anybody yeah. with, with any amount of weight. By the way, this is, I don't, I don't like touching people on a spot. Like we don't touch people on a spot, right? We've talked about this. We don't, we don't do the reverse bear hug, you know, squat spot. That's not what we do. Totally it's change two, the it's movement. Two, that's right. It's two people side spotting. Don't touch anything, or use the safeties. But we're not going to back spot somebody on the squat. I I just I don't believe in it. It's going to screw it up. And as soon as you touch them up in their armpits, it changes the move. It changes what yeah. they think. Right? Hey, listen. Yeah. I've used it even with Rachel before on bench press. You know, I can, and I I'm sort of ashamed to admit this. Like I hate it when cl my clients post a bench press video and somebody touches their bar. I knew yeah. a person once who invented a shirt called Don't Touch My Bar and it was upside down. It was you. <laughs> and so I think we still sell that maybe on the Barbara Lecture. We might have website. one or two left, yeah. So um, yeah, Don't Touch My Bar, right? And so, man, I got this guy in England. He's awesome. And he, every single person at his gym touches his bar every time. I think I had a European client oh too. Oh my God. And it was and the some, guy, something about the gym atmosphere there. It's crazy. Like, They're like, I just want to help you. And I'm like, no, that's what, exactly what we don't want. So, I mean, he is like very <laughs> assertive and he's like, they still touch the bar, man. I don't know. What to do. I'm just like, it's crazy. <laughs> and so I don't want to touch the bar. Now, here's the thing. With Rachel, I know after being with her for 25 years, when she does a set of five and she has kind of a grindy fourth, 
I know when she's mentally going to give up on number five. Oh, okay. And, but like, it's that extra little bit of work, right? So, yeah. Right, but yeah, so we, we can use, this is just another tool in our toolbox to be able to add this tactile piece to say, sometimes I can use a tactile cue, which will accomplish better than anything I can do verbally or visually. It's the appropriate thing in the moment. So those things like, like the band or the bungee cord on the depth of squat or a, a box for a box squat or the tubo for the knees or or grabbing somebody's elbows and and bringing them forward and making their wrists go straight on a press. Like those things are, I, I challenge you to tell someone, to talk someone who has never pressed in their life how to get their elbows forward and wrists straight. It is really hard. I know because sometimes we get online coaching oh clients gosh. that are brand new and you're like, like this. And then I'll go back and I'll go to the video. Is it Andrew that's the, that's the, uh, the, in the long form one where we're doing in the how to video on press. And so I'm like, we're like, do it like this elbows forward, wrist straight, <laughs> elbows forward, make it look like this. And then they walk up, they go, Poof! and then their wrist gets super bent. And I'll be like, did you hear that? You know part? what's another one <laughs> is an, an empty bar, the lockout position of a bench press. It's like over their face, right? Or over their belly button. Yeah. And if you can just take your hands and move the bar for them, that's right. It'll save them you in like position. 17 gray hairs and <laughs> yeah. just be like, that's where it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> By the way, that's another one, the lockout of the press. A lot of times we'll take yeah. people's arms and like shrug up. Now, when I'm online, what I'll say is touch your ears with your shoulders. Yeah. Because I'm not there to grab their triceps and, and pull up on them. But that's another really good one. And, and like most people can actually almost make contact or make contact with their ears from their shoulders. And even if they can't, they understand what that means. So at the top, it's like, hey, that's where the break is. Go up there, touch, and feel that. That's the finish of the press so that we get that big, giant, it's it's a flexion instead of extension, which makes me angry. Finish. We get a big, strong finish yeah. on the top of the press. So all those awesome. are good. Any others? Um, 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 I was thinking about deadlift ones, and I think the one that's built into a teaching progression is the bar touching the leg. Yep. Where it gets dragged up the leg is a Definitely. really good one. Um, And then in person... As you're helping them find balance in their midfoot, you might have to like, you know, just put your hands on their shoulders yep. and just like Shift. adjust them back just yep. a little bit or like bring their hips up just a little bit to help them realize that. And then to, again, for like lumbar and even sometimes thoracic extension yep. or like straight elbows, sometimes on a deadlift more often in a power clean. Um, yeah, those are some of the big ones that come to yeah, mind. And then, and then again, I think there's a lot of carryover here in often what we verbally say to clients and what we're doing it often is we're verbally cueing what they should feel. Yeah. So I was I was talking to one of my clients yesterday morning, I think. And I, I think most people know this. I almost exclusively box squat now because my my bad hips. I still squat, still squatting two, two, three times a week. But I squat I squat on a box. And for me, I need I do want the box to take some weight. So I feel that. But what I'm really thinking about, and you've watched me box squat, if I'm not careful, I'll let all the weight come off my feet in the bottom mm -hmm. of a box squat. And I'll sit on the mm -hmm. box, my toes will lift off the floor. So what I th so those that's the wrong thing to do, which is not what I would cue. Instead, what I'm thinking the entire time I'm descending is pressure on midfoot, pressure on yeah. midfoot, pressure. Dude, on I'm so glad you said that. That is the one tactile cue that everybody can use in every single lift. That's right. I want to think press, about having like pressure on midfoot. Mid that's right, midfoot. Mm -hmm. And so even when I'm sitting on the box, even when the box is taking some of my weight, I still feel significant pressure on the middle of my foot, or I should, if it, if it doesn't, it comes back to my heels. Then I know, oops, I rock back. I'm not over midfoot. And so, you know, same thing on press. I had a, I had a guy the other day do the tippy toe thing on the press. He was pressing, coming up on his tippy toes and then dropping down. I was like, that's basically like a very inefficient jerk is what that is. It's like you're jerking <laughs> with your ankles instead of with your knees. That's really what it is, right? So yeah. you're pressing, you go up on your tippy toes and you drop down and you try to get underneath it. It's like, nope, I feel the pressure on midfoot as you press throughout the, you know, throughout the press. And yeah. Uh, yeah, so you're right. That that mid that midfoot, same thing on deadlift, right? I, that's the other thing I'm thinking about the whole time. I I shove my knees out. People have seen I'm almost looks. It almost looks like I got a really narrow stance. I'm almost like in a plie, but I'm pushing through the middle of my foot. I even think more of that, and I know it's very similar cue. I I've used the leg press cue a ton, like leg press, push the earth away. Personally, I just think push through the middle of my foot, like push through the arch of my. I'm pushing that. I try to push the arch of my foot down into the floor. And as I do that, it makes everything heavy in my hands, my chest is up, and I can just start the movement with that knee extension like I need to. And you, you can't tell somebody, start the movement with knee extension. It doesn't work very well. 
But if you push the floor away, push through midfoot, and so that, yeah, I love that midfoot cue. And it's really being cognizant and, and aware of where your midfoot is, I think is really important. And yeah. like you said, I think it's important to sometimes shift somebody a little too far, swing the pendulum a little bit. Here's what it feels like when you're on your ball of your foot. Shift them back. Here's what it feels like when you're on your heels. Here's the middle. Feel the difference. Feel the middle of your, right? So it's a, it's a great cue for sure. Yeah. Awesome. Anything awesome. else? Awesome. There you go. Nope. Tac tactile cues for you. So again, another great tool to put in your toolbox, whether you are an up and coming coach or a professional coach, whether you're an in-person coach or an online coach, hopefully you got some stuff out of this. Uh, let us know as we post this, especially in the, in the comments uh, of YouTube, what some of your favorite tactile cues are, especially if we didn't uh, talk about them in this episode, both on YouTube or on Instagram when we post. We'd love to hear those because I still like learning from everybody. Yeah. I, I love picking stuff up. We'll have, sometimes our coaches will post this on Slack and I'll go, oh man, that's a great so cue. Good. And then I steal it and call it my own. And you probably talk <laughs> about it on the podcast later and give them no credit for it. I don't, who knows? So, so as you do. So, cause I forget, I forget things. I'm <laughs> getting old. I'm Same. how old my grandpa used to do this. The one he's long since dead. God rest his soul. But he used to, as he got older, he would, he would just uh, claim that he was a senior citizen and that's why he couldn't remember <laughs> things. And so I'm going to start doing that as a coach. I'm be like, oh, I don't, I, I'm old. I don't remember where I learned I think, that from. I think the age used to be like 50 to start claiming that, but then <laughs> now it's much you older. Get like senior citizen discounts, but now I think it's like 65. <laughs> okay. Yes. That's, yeah. probably, that's probably true. Ooh, the, my <laughs> senior first senior moments. citizen discount sounds awesome. I'm looking forward yeah. to those days. So this has been another episode of the Barbell Logic Podcast with Nikki and Matt. Uh, if you've had value out of this, you got value out of this podcast, receive value out of this podcast, we would love a five-star review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen to your podcast. Share it with a friend or family member. If you've got an up-and-coming coach that you know that's maybe either uh, as a friend or somebody that's worked underneath you, these are great podcasts to share, as well as the podcast that Nikki and SCJ are doing every other week or so. Uh, man, we're just really trying to help people transition from that lifter state, beginner lifter state, to I've fallen in love with barbell training, to I want to help coach, and I'm trying to learn where I'm at in that path. And so we're trying to provide value there. So if you've had some, uh, we would love that five-star review. And we'll catch you next week. By the way, fresh clean tea right here. I love, I love it. these. It looks really I love comfy. the fresh clean teas. They're super comfy. <laughs> love them. Fit well. You guys have a great week. We'll see you next Tuesday.